I have Lara on our Creativity Summit today. She is a young adult and romance author with more than seven titles to her name since her first book was published in 2004. But it was a personal and professional crisis that led her to write what she considers her most powerful book, a nonfiction um, work called Author Your Life, which is about using the power of writing to create a better story for yourself. Lara's here today to talk about writing and creativity and how writing in the third person can unlock new levels of breakthrough and how we all have a hero's journey. So welcome, Lara. Thank you so much. I am delighted to be here. Thank you for having me. I am so delighted to have you um, here in the summit. Um, we met on a, on another on your summit. And yeah. So yeah. I, I feel like our paths were meant to cross. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so can you tell me a little bit about how you came into your own as a creative being? Ooh, great question. Way to like lead it off with power. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I think, you know, you hinted at it a little bit in the, in the bio that you, that you have. And I think, you know, a lot of us find our creative power in a place of darkness. Um, so for a long time, I was chasing the publishing stick. I was just like going after it. And I thought if I can just be published, I'll be successful. And it was like book after book after book. And it was just like, it was fine, but I really wasn't, I don't think connected to my, my true identity and true purpose. And I had built this sort of, um, you know, scaffolding of identity as like a published author. And so when that went away, which it inevitably will do, um, you know, I, my, I had both my publishers kind of kick me to the curb within about a week of each other, which talk about a tough, a tough moment. Um, and it led me to like, I was in a just really, really dark place, like drinking too much, pulling away from people, questioning my identity. Um, and what I wanted to do was just start another book. Like, let's just jump in. Like, let's just do it. Uh, and my sweet husband said, um, sit in the darkness, sit in the darkness. So I was like, no, I want to write a book, but I, I did listen to him and um, I did not distract myself with another project. And so in that darkness, I found, um, I, I thought, what is going to like, what is going to heal me? What is going to like make me um, just whole again? And we, like, who am I without these publishing contracts really? And what emerged was this idea that I was like, I'm going to write myself like a character in a book yes. and just write what I want to have happen to Lara as a character. And I did that for a year. And at the end of a year, my life was profoundly changed and I had a different heart and a different outlook and a different attitude. So I feel like that was the moment um, where my real creative self emerged. Cause I feel like this was my calling the whole time, but I just couldn't answer my creative calling until all that publishing stuff went away. And it's like you had to have that publishing stuff happen to be able to help others out of those blocks too, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. And turns out I love self-publishing. Turns out it's great, who knew? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. It's nice. You get to pick your own cover. You get to decide how long it is. It's the best. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you posted, so I adore you. So I follow, like I borderline stalk all of your work. <laughs> and you posted in your Facebook group recently about, um, about some rocks <laughs> that look like plain old rocks. They do. Yep. And I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about that story because I think it's really pertinent to um, a lot of us who are creative or mm. even those of us that don't think we are creative and probably especially those of us that don't necessarily think we have a creative bone in our body. Yeah, absolutely. So these, okay, so <clears throat> excuse me, the rocks are called Uperlite. So I live in Michigan. So when you live in Michigan, you like hold your hand up and this is not fair because there's actually like another part of Michigan called the <laughs> Upper Peninsula. Yeah, so you, you're doing it right. Um, so you hold your hand up and you show where you live, but way up here, way at the top, um, on the shores of Lake Superior, when you're way up there, uh, there's this guy who will take you to the beach at night and you go hunting with this black, black light um, and you scan this black light along the beach and you're looking for these rocks called euperlites. 
for the UP, UPER. Um, oh, and Peninsula. they, and they cute. So when you hit them with your light, they look like fallen stars, like these hot coals. Like I get goosebumps every I mean, time I talk I'm about it. I'm getting goosebumps listening to you. They look like hot coals that were the hearts of stars that just fell to the ground. And they're so beautiful. And when you find one, you're just like, what about a Uber light? And um, it, you get to keep like what you find. And this guy has, everybody go meet Eric because he's like the coolest guy. And he's got a creative story that'll just knock your socks off. But at the end of the day, so I had never hunted a Uber light before. You do it in the dark. You absolutely, it has to be very dark out. So we, we started at like 10 at night and finished at like two in the morning. And we got done, got our Uber lights, got back to the hotel, went to sleep, woke up in the morning. And I looked at these rocks. And they're like the most boring rocks of all time. They're so gray and flat. And like you would walk past them and think like, that's a stupid rock. <laughs> and there's nothing special about that rock. And it got me thinking um, about how, how we can think of ourselves as like not creative or I'm just this like boring person or I really, like you said, I don't have a creative bone in my body. But under the right conditions, if you just get the right condition. So maybe it needs to be dark out and you need a blue and you need a black light. And all of a sudden you look like this glowing star that fell to earth. And I think, so in my work, I often help people try to create the right conditions so that they can be creative. And especially with writing, just right. to bring that writing forward um, because it's, it's in there. And, I, and it's easy to think that our creative calling sort of doesn't matter that we don't have to answer our creative calling, that it's just this frivolous thing that it's not going to pay the bills and it's not, but that is really like our heart calling to us and our heart, you know, asking us to bring whatever it is, a story, a painting, a craft project, to bring it forward. There's a part of us that needs that. So it's all about creating the right conditions under which your creative person can come forward. And what do you think some of, well, okay, so I want to circle back first, because um, you talked about how you were in a dark night, basically, mm -hmm. in order yeah. to get there. And so maybe, like, I mean, just to bring that full circle to what we're talking about, I mean, the, the stones look boring and look, they're in their own dark night when they're not under a black light. Right, right. Yeah, and you need the dark night. Well, in my case, I needed the dark right. night in order to become the glowing stone, right? And maybe those stones need the dark night to stay protected from you yes. know, the wrong people, you know? Who knows? Exactly. Exactly. You never know. Like, we never know. <laughs> yeah. But it's true. It's true. All the conditions under which we are going to, like, thrive and bring our creative work forward all of those conditions, I mean, I think they're different for every person and all of those conditions are exactly what you need. Yeah. And if you, if you, I mean that in the sense of like, if you, if you sit in, if you sit in the darkness, God, this is just like a whole thing about darkness, but if you sit in the darkness, right? You, those, you will learn what you need. If you, you will learn what it will take for you to show your sparkle. That's right. That, that magic, that creativity, that comes forward from from those places and you know I honestly feel like I could do probably this whole summit with you because there's so many topics that I want to talk to you about um I'm like oh I'm, I'm just thinking of things so I, but I want to keep us kind of on track even though I've got like lots of thoughts spitting around in my mind um you know I do want to touch on the hero's journey yeah because I know that's a really um integral part of your work and it's a um, big part of what you do in the academy, I believe, too, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about that and talk about cognitive distance. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. So let me write that down because they're kind of two different uh, things. Yeah, but we can we can get there. We can get we there. We'll get there, girl. Let's talk about. Let's start with the hero's journey. Okay. So the hero's journey, um, most people know it was um, sort of popularized by this guy named Joseph Campbell, and he wrote about it in the 70s. Um, but it's this idea that, that across every culture throughout time, there is this um, sort of template that a hero will go through on an epic quest to the self-actualization or self-realization, essentially. But what's interesting is that it's, it's the same across time and culture from, you know, cave, cave, paintings to, you know, Harry Potter, right? 
So the thing that I think is most interesting, there's two parts about the hero's journey that I love to talk about. And the first part is this idea that the first part of the journey is answering the call to adventure. That's the first part of the journey. Now, everybody hears that and they think, I get to start having adventures. Yay. <laughs> but answering the call to adventure, the active part of it is actually the answering part. And it, in order to answer something, you actually have to listen in order to answer. You have to be hearing something in order to answer. So that means that many of us are missing the call to adventure because we're not listening. We're off doing some other quest that is not actually what our heart is calling us to do. I, and this is true of my stuff too, right? Like I was trying to write middle grade and erotica and write everything instead of like listening to what my heart was actually calling yes. me yeah. to do. Like, so what was the thing? Yeah. 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 So the first part of the hero's journey is not that you jump out and have adventures. You have to listen first and then you, you answer the call and then the adventures start. So listening to your heart is essentially like so critical and so important and no journey can start without it. Okay. I'm going to tie us in here in the hero's journey to cognitive distance. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> I think that part of listening is morning pages or mm. some sort of free form of writing, yeah. like just almost stream of cognitive, a stream of um, consciousness mm -hmm. writing can be a form of listening. And you can get a little bit more pointed in that. So from there, you have a particular style of doing that that I think is really powerful. And I'm wondering if you can talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're absolutely right. So let me just put the asterisk on everything yeah. that I'm about to say and yes. say that there are a million ways that you can listen to yourself. There's yoga, there's meditation, there's journaling, there's therapy, there's a thousand things. So this just happens to be one more that you can add to your quiver full of arrows that point directly at your heart. So the thing that I, <laughs> the thing that I offer is um, the author your life method, which I developed in the darkness when I was sitting in the darkness and writing myself like a character. That is truly what got me to my breakthrough. So I imagine myself in the third person, like a character in the third person in the future. And I was like, what would make Lara happy? Like I would say, what does she want to be, do, have, and feel those four things. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine that for her, like, what, what was it? Like, what would truly, how did she want to feel? And I was like, I was sad. I was bitter. My heart was hard. And I just kept thinking like, God, I really want to feel joy. I want to feel compassion for people again. I want to feel peace. And so I'd write about this character named Lara and all that she felt and that she had um, abundance in her life and she had love in her life and she had all these things in her life. And um, that is really the bones of the author your life method is that, you know, you can still, by God, you can still do morning pages and journal in the first person and do all that good therapy part. and yoga so, and yes. meditate. <laughs> this is a yes. And this is a yes. And yes. And you can also do this thing where you imagine yourself like a character in here, getting back to your wonderful question about cognitive distance is what this does is it creates um, cognitive distance. So your brain is more likely to believe it if it thinks that you're talking about somebody else. So because if I say, all right, this is the week, I'm going to lose my 10 pounds, or I'm going to start my diet, or I'm going to run more, or I'm going to whatever it is, I'm going to write those pages, I'm going to do the thing, I'm going to meditate this week. Our brain is like, no, you're not. No, you're not. You've got to go grocery shopping and the dog needs to go to the vet. And when are you going to do that? And you've tried this before and it didn't work. And your brain is just like, shut me down, shut me down. But Alicia, if I told you, if I looked you right in the eyes and I was like, Alicia, this is the week I'm going to start that writing project that I have been putting off. You would be like, yes, you are. Yes, you can do it. I know you can. And you would believe me when I told you, right? Because right? you, because I, because it's me, it's, it's not yourself. Right. So, so all we're doing when we write about ourselves in the third person and in the future, we're just tricking our brains a little bit to believe it, to crack open the door of possibility. Because if I say, Lara, Lara does it, my brain's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Like, yeah, I can get behind that. And so what that does is it, it changes, it literally changes um, the, neuro the neuro pathways in our brain. So we do, we've developed new patterns of thought, which is awesome because that is like super important. And then the For other thing, reasons. right. <laughs> and the other thing is it's a pattern breaker so that when I am, you know, 
uh, not doing the thing or if I'm actively sabotaging myself, um, my brain's like, wait, that's not our story. Cause we've written it over and over and over and over that we love ourselves, that we are, you know, in tune with our creativity, that we are, you know, whatever it is, your brain is like, okay, I can recognize when the pattern's being broken. And one of the things that you do with your clients is you, when they're talking to you, you listen intently and you help them come up with new mantras and new sentences that they can say around to change the story around what they're telling themselves about their work. Exactly. Yep. That's the core of it. That's the core of it. Yep. I listen and I, we go through exercises and, you know, at the end of the day, they sound a lot like affirmations, which is totally fine. Um, you can, you can build on them if you want to. I mean, there's a lot to be said for, you know, Lara has abundance. Like, well, what does that look like? You know, where do I live? And you know, how do I, how do I feel when my, when I pay my bills with ease and how much, how rich is my life? Because I have all these abundant relationships. Like how does, you know, you can like, you can really write a story, but at the end of the day to get started for people who've never done this, like take the affirmation and run with it. Exactly. Exactly. So what would be an affirmation that people could have today? Oh, so that's a good can question. You start with me. What, what could I do to increase my creative life? Okay. There's three. I'm going to give you three. These mm-hmm. are like the foundational building blocks. Okay. If you do okay. nothing else, these right. are the three you need to write. Okay. okay. So you would write your name loves herself. So Alicia loves herself or whatever pronoun you use. It's I do herself because that's how I identify. So Alicia loves herself. And the reason that this is so important is because if we don't love ourselves, the universe can send us all these amazingly good things that we love and that would like make us so happy. We cannot accept them. We can't accept them. And so for me, like finances is always the best example of that. Because if the universe sends me like you know, in the past when it was like, Hey, wow, I'm, you know, I'm successful and I've got abundance and money. I'd be like, spend, spend, spend. Cause I felt like I don't deserve this. I need to get it off me, away from me. I don't deserve it. I don't love myself. I'm not, I shouldn't have this. So that is, that's just my story. But so your name loves yourself. It means you can receive and accept all of the good things that the universe has for you. Love it. Okay. That's number one. Number two, your name is grateful. Gratitude. We got to have gratitude. Yes. Your name is grateful. So if we can have gratitude for the things around us, we can accept more of it as well. Um, so that's another like paving the way for good things to happen in our life. And the third one might be my favorite, which is that your name sees the um, opportunities and possibilities around her. Alicia sees the opportunities and possibilities around her. Yep. Yep. And that one I love because you don't, so a lot of times we get so fixated on the how, like how is something going to happen? How, oh my God, I need, I need, you know, whatever it is. I need a new job. How's this going to happen? And we're freaked out. Like, do I go to LinkedIn? Do I get a life coach? Do I da da da? And it's like, you know what, if you stay open and you truly are open to everything that the universe has for you, like it'll show up and you don't have to, it's like ease. It's like, right. right. Yes. Laura, this is awesome. <laughs> so many good tidbits in today. And like I said, like, I feel like I could interview you like 15 times and have 15 different things to share with our audience. Um, but I want to be, um, respectful of your time today and everyone listening, but I know you have a free gift for everyone. I absolutely do. I have, um, I'd love everyone to have the first chapter of my new book, Author Your Life, and dive in and learn a little bit more about this and see if you like it. And we will provide a link so that they can go over and download that um, from your website, right? Yes, exactly. (laughs) Well, Laura, thank you so much for being a part of this summit. And I hope you have, everyone has a fantastic rest of the day. Oh, thanks for having me, Alicia. This was delightful.